Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Um, I just want to let you know a little couple of housekeeping items. Um, you can, for the audio feature of today's webinar, you can either call in, dial in through your phone, or you can also just listen through the speakers on your computer. So either way, just by default, everyone on the line is muted, and that's really just to eliminate background noise so that you can hear everything that's going on. So um, since everyone is muted and some people are on their computers, if you have a question, the best way to do that is to just ask it right in your question log box, which is going to be on the right-hand side of your screen in your GoToMeeting panel. So you can ask your question there, and we'll either get to it right away if it has to do with maybe the slide that we're on. But if not, we'll have a question and answer period at the end and make sure we get through everything. If you're on the phone or if you have a microphone in your computer and you want to ask your question over the phone or on your computer, you can raise your hand and we'll unmute you so you can ask your question. So either way, just let us know and we'll hopefully get your question answered. So this is a new webinar that we're offering um, combined with the launch of the College Positive Mentoring Toolkit. So Mentor Michigan has partnered with Michigan Campus Compact to develop resources for mentoring programs, mentors, and mentees to think about and start to take steps towards education after high school. So the centerpiece of this work is really the College Positive Mentoring Toolkit, which is on our website. And we also are going to have um, an opportunity to get some hard copy versions of that if you're interested. So my name is Katie Timmer, and I'm an AmeriCorps VISTA here serving with Mentor Michigan. Helping me facilitate today's webinar is Marilyn Beardsley, and she's the College Access and Success AmeriCorps VISTA with Michigan Campus Compact. Hi, everyone. We also have a special guest on the line today that's really going to be sharing examples of how they've incorporated college access into their program. And today we have Nicole from um, Kellogg Community College. Hello. So here is kind of a brief outline of what we're going to be talking about today. So in today's webinar, we're going to be exploring the concept of college positive mentoring, We'll also be doing a brief overview of the College Positive Mentoring Toolkit. And then we're going to really go into the meat of today's discussion and discussing the importance of college access and how you can incorporate college access into your mentoring program, both through examples from the field and then also just by um, taking you through some of the pieces of the toolkit. So by the end of today's session, we hope that you walk away with some insight as well as some tangible ideas of really how you can integrate that college access piece into your program, regardless of the age of the young people that you serve, so elementary, middle, and high school. And we also want to offer you some resources for your mentors to become college positive mentors that are really setting their mentees on a path to higher education. So like I said, if you have questions throughout the session, feel free to type them into the question log box or raise your hand and we can unmute you. If we don't get to your question right away, don't worry. We'll leave time at the end to answer any remaining questions. So as we all know, you know, mentoring relationships really provide youth with that consistent encouragement, skills, and motivation to succeed both personally and academically. And so through this existing trusting and caring relationship structure, Mentors really have the unique opportunity to expose their mentee to college as well as career-focused resources and opportunities. And exposing them to these resources and opportunities really empowers the young person to consider education beyond high school as a realistic option. And then also it equips them with the tools to start to plan for as well as then attend post-secondary institutions. So kind of our language around this issue, college positive mentoring encourages and creates a pathway for young people that are involved in mentoring relationships to consider, plan for, and attend post-secondary institutions. So carefully structured and supported mentoring provides young people with the developmental resources that they need for success. And when you combine that with the age-appropriate and appealing college access activities and consistent encouragement, mentoring relationships, they can really help young people succeed both personally and academically, setting them on that pathway for higher education. 
So like I said a little bit earlier, Mentor Michigan and Michigan Campus Compact have partnered to develop the College Positive Mentoring Toolkit. And the toolkit is really designed to provide mentors with information, conversation starters, match activity ideas, and then also ready-to-use activities. That's really going to help their mentee take those important steps towards higher education. So um, the College Positive Mentoring Toolkit was actually was adapted from Michigan Campus Compact College Positive Volunteerism Toolkit, and we really infuse a lot of those, the mentoring language and things for mentors to really make it ideal for this relationship. So myself, I'm the Mentor Michigan AmeriCorps VISTA member, as well as Marilyn with Michigan Campus Compact. We work to adapt this toolkit to really speak to mentors with support from our, the Mentor Michigan Director Amber Troop, as well as Michelle Snitchen, who's the Assistant Director for Grant Programs with Michigan Campus Compact. All right, this is just a brief overview of the layout of the toolkit. So before we get started, you can kind of see um, what the toolkit looks like and how it's organized. Um, there are five sections to the toolkit. Um, the first section is for elementary school students. Um, the second section for middle school, the third for high school. Um, and within each of these categories, um, they're set up very similar and each have conversation starters and tips, as you can see. Also match activity ideas, um, web or reading uh, sources, like different books that um, are talking about different careers and goals and dreams. And then um, there's also 10 ready-to-use um, activities for each grade level um, within the toolkit. And so those are there um, as well. And then the section four is additional resources, which um, is for all ages and things like um, talking points about colleges and um, exploring possible careers activities and a frequently asked questions section so mentors feel prepared to answer any questions that um, their, their mentees may have, as well as a paying for college section, which um, can be very helpful because there's so many different ways to pay for college, and so this section can really um, be there, and they can use that as a resource to guide the mentee um, as they apply for post-secondary education. So just to let you know, um, throughout the toolkit, we've actually coded each one of the activities so that mentors can really easily find an activity both based on their location as well as their access to a computer. So you'll see on the screen there's um, an icon for a geared towards community-based matches. So these may be things that only a community-based match could do, like go on a college scavenger hunt or a college visit. Um, there's also school and site-based matches. So these are things that can be done within the school, so an activity worksheet that doesn't necessarily um, you don't need to go anywhere for it, so you can do it with, when you're sitting at the library or wherever at, you're at in that school. And then also the third one is if you need access to a computer with an internet. So there's some online activities or some things where you maybe want to go check out some further resources. That's what that icon's really used for. Um, and then so many of the activity ideas that we've put into the toolkit, as well as the ready-to-use activities, are really suitable for both community-based and school or site-based matches. Um, but there are a couple that are just for one or the other. And then also some of the suggestions that involve visiting a website for information or completing an online activity. So matches could complete these activities at the school library or the public library if they don't have access to a private computer at home. Um, we're just going to go over a little bit about what we mean when we say college. Um, when we say college, as you can see on the screen, we are referring to four-year colleges and universities, um, community colleges and junior colleges, which are um, two years, and as well as vocational, technical, and business schools um, that are available. Um, we really want K-12 youth to know that college is possible for them, and we want them to know um, there's a wide range of different post-secondary um, options available. And so we don't want to discourage any of their dreams. We just want to uh, let them know there are a lot of options out there. And having this additional training and education after high school will increase the youth's skills and credentials, um, giving them a higher chance um, of employment as well as many other different benefits as they um, move into the workforce. 
Um, college access is kind of the issue we're working on right now. This is a college access program. Um, it's a buzzword going around right now in Michigan when it comes to youth accessing higher education. Um, and really, this definition is encouraging and helping K-12 youth um, consider, plan for, and attend post-secondary institutions after high school. So any efforts relating to um, having youth um, understand the path to college, um, as well as being successful in college as well. Um, efforts are often aimed at underrepresented students, uh, especially low income and first generation, or first in their families to attend college. However, the goal is college access for all. Um, and those who are first in their families or low income just have never been through the process before, and so that's why we are um, aiming um, specifically at those populations. But um, college access for all is the goal. Um, college positive mentors can be there for their mentee when no one else is um, in those situations. And so this is an awesome opportunity for mentors um, to be that role and be that resource for them um, as they are going through the process. Um, to combat um, all these different things that youth are up against, we need to understand um, the barriers that they are facing as they go into college and so that we can um, better equip them to have access to college and be successful. Um, there are four main um, areas where youth are coming into contact with things that they are unfamiliar with when it comes to the college process. Um, the first one is the culture that they are growing up in. They may feel that college is not attainable for them and that um, they grew up in a family that had never gone to college and so they don't understand the process. And so really being there and um, encouraging youth um, and as their mentors encouraging their mentees, um, this could really um, play a big role in their decision to attend post-secondary education. Um, there's also the academic preparedness um, piece. Um, so just having the mentees and or mentors, excuse me, encourage the the mentee to be successful in school. Um, have encourage good study habits. Um, maybe help them get a tutor if they need it, and um, encourage them to be in any college preparatory courses that they might um, need. Um, also, finding the right fit in a school is something that um, is troublesome. Um, for some men t or for some youth, um, the Michigan in Michigan uh, counselor to student ratio is one to six hundred and forty three students, and so counselors in high schools don't really have the time to have one on one connections with every single student and help them along in their process. And so, so this is where um, mentors come in and can be a great help to them outside of school and be there to encourage them. Um, in applying and visiting colleges and even choosing majors. Um, and lastly, paying for college is um, a huge barrier um, that students are up against, but um, we provided in the toolkit, as I said earlier, um, eight different ways that, you know, options that there are to pay for college, including filling out the FAFSA um, and applying for loans and different scholarships as well. So um, those are all there for the men mentors to um, access. So even if they have no idea about any of this, they can be that resource and um, help the students prepare for their post-secondary future. Um, I just wanted to talk about the need in Michigan right now, why college access is important for youth and why we should be um, interested in, in raising the number of students going to college in Michigan. Um, right now, 36% of Michigan residents hold a two-year degree or higher. Um, this is from the Lumina Foundation. Um, and the national average is 38%. So we are below the average um, in, in the nation. And um, that is kind of, we're the 33rd most educated state. And so this is the reason why um, the number is staggeringly low to me. Um, and so we can work to increase that number. And, um, you know, there's a lot of talk that college doesn't get, 
college isn't useful in getting people employed, um, but a study that the Georgetown University Center on Education and Workforce um, just came out with, that um, in the year 2018, 62% of Michigan jobs will require some sort of post-secondary education or training. And so the job force is really changing, and in, in the future, in a couple years, jobs will be requiring some sort of post-secondary education. And so um, this is an issue, um, this, this issue of college access is um, an issue that mentoring organizations can easily address and um, work into educating their program staff and mentors to be college positive. So now that we've talked a little bit about the larger issue of college access, as well as some of those barriers to think about um, when you're implementing this, I think it's really important that we give you some information about how you can really bring college access into your mentoring program. So research does really suggest that students who engage with a mentor for a sustained period of time are much more likely to attend post-secondary institutions. So right off the bat, we know that mentoring really is working and helping to address this issue. So in addition to that, some of that more targeted stuff can really help to increase those numbers. So mentors can really provide that support, the encouragement, and the resources to set their mentee on a path for higher education. So preparing for education beyond high school really can be a daunting task for young people, as well as their mentors and their families. So the College Positive Mentoring Toolkit, it really offers some tangible activities and ideas to start facilitating discussions and resource, resource sharing among mentors, mentees, as well as the mentee's family. So mentors really have a unique opportunity as already being a trusted and caring adult in the life of a young person. So they can easily infuse those career and college-focused activities and conversations to create that college-going mentality, making it a realistic option. So it's really important that um, it's not anything new. You're not recruiting new college positive mentors. You're taking those mentors and those relationships that you already have and you're infusing some additional activities or, and a lot of them are easy things to do that really help the mentee start thinking about their future and their college and their careers. Um, so talking about what is a college positive mentor, um, a college positive mentor is a mentor who is aware of how they impact the college futures of their mentee. And this is definitely a way to strategically um, reach youth across the state. Um, we feel at Mentor Michigan and Michigan Campus Compact that this is a perfect opportunity um, for mentors um, to be involved in this. Um, they are already interacting with their mentee on a regular basis, and um, the mentor is a caring adult other than a parent, counselor, teacher, um, and they're therefore more likely to listen to their mentor and um, take advice from them um, as they are going through the process. Um, the mentor's role, um, college positive mentors, serve to connect their mentees um, to the information opportunities that make college a realistic option um, <clears throat> for their mentors. Um, the role of a college positive mentor is to offer encouragement and support to promote college, a college going mindset, expose their mentee to the different resources and options there are in college, and to equip them with the tools and knowledge to explore and pursue higher education. Um, making sure that the mentor draws healthy boundaries in regard to the role um, that they are playing in this. Um, for instance, it is not the mentor's job to provide financial assistance of any kind or to fill out financial aid forms for their mentee, um, but to help them really understand the different options and deadlines um, and discuss with them and their parents or guardians um, the, the steps in the process. Um, in, in the toolkit, there are so many different resources and options um, for the mentor so they don't have to feel like they are experts in any of these areas and paying for college and maybe the mentor has never been to college. And so just being able to provide these resources and be that link between um, college and, and the mentee. So that is the mentor's role through this. 
and um, going on to the next slide, as I just said, um, college positive mentors are resources and not experts. And so there's the toolkit um, to help them along with that process. And so this w could fit really nicely into the regular day-to-day um, -day match meetings of mentors, and it, it isn't anything extra they have to add into their, their, their load of things to do. So um, when thinking about the intersection between mentoring and college access, there's some things to keep in mind. And this is both for mentors as well as program staff. So um, mentors really should be cautious and well sensitive to the cultural differences regarding college attendance. And I think it's also important to be aware of maybe alternate options. So that might include a local community college so that they could stay at home, or even like a religious institution and many of the other options that really are out there for young people in terms of post-secondary ed education. So um, another thing to keep in mind that there are many factors that contribute to an individual's life history. So it's important to take care not to judge either the background or the socioeconomic status, the aspirations, the parent or guardians, et cetera, of the mentee. Mentors should really try to form good relationships with a parent, and parent or guardian as well so that they can secure that support around college access efforts with their mentee because there's going to be a point where that mentor can only do so much and it's really on the young person and the families to do more, for an example, um, such as financial aid. So mentors working with a young person whose parents did not attend college, they really need to be both patient and sensitive to the needs of their mentee as well as those of their families. Um, mentors must be respectful of the values of the mentee and the mentee family while also um, navigating these processes and the institutions that are involved with college attendance, connecting college to job and career interests, and really perceiving themselves as college material and believing that college is possible. So mentors always should be encouraging their mentee to do well in school and pursue their dreams and to attend college by, well, as simple as this seems, they should be responding with, yes, you can, rather than maybe you can or maybe you can't, because that confidence factor and the mentor having confidence in the mentee is going to equate to the mentee having confidence in themselves. So um, in thinking about how you put college access in practice when working with volunteers and working with young people, we have Nicole, who is a Mentor Michigan College Coaching Corps member with Kellogg Community College. Nicole? Hello. Well, I have been doing a wide array of different things um, being placed on the college campus. I have the asset of having college students um, locally that I have recruited to come do college positive activities. Um, we've been using a lot of the schools, um, the elementary schools in particular. Um, we do some things where we just go in and we read to the students. Um, we make sure that they wear KCC attire. Um, it's small things that are college access just to get the students, because when you're working with elementary school students, you have to go about it differently than obviously the older kids. So it's mostly just getting them to question, where do you go to school? What are you doing? Um, do your siblings go to school? Just starting to talk to them the small things. Um, also, I have been working with teachers um, that hopefully this fall, we will be putting up bulletin boards in their hallways of the different elementary schools that have pictures of the teachers with their graduation cap and gown and maybe pennants and just kind of doing those small strides to get the kids to start looking at, oh, like my, my mom went to Michigan State or my sister is going to go there or just kind of starting to put the connections together younger because as I have found with working with the high school students, um, they haven't quite got there yet. Um, they are as seniors are starting to think about where they should be going to college when they should have been thinking about that as freshmen in high school. So if we start getting the kids to think about it now, it'll just be natural for them to be like, where am I going to college? What do I got to do to get there? Um, I've also been doing a lot of um, some college fair, college information sessions. So if you 
are interested in anything like that, there are websites that you can go to that have already set up stuff that is focused for whatever age group you want or using our toolkit. There are some other information sessions. I've also found, too, that when working with the high school students, they are kind of lost when it comes to what, what they should be doing. And I didn't graduate too long ago, and I remember being as confused as they are. So if you put together a college checklist calendar, which is something I've been working on, where it lays out during, this is what you should be doing when you go to school. Um, August, September, October, you should be going on campus tours, you should be starting to apply to colleges, you should be looking at financial aid, you should be like looking at things, and make it a checklist so they can cross things off. And that way, if they can come to you and be like, I'm on this step, what should I be doing? What can I be doing? What can you help me with? Kind of go that way so that you know where they're at and they know where they're at. Because that's been a big issue too is thinking that we haven't been there. And don't ever be afraid to call. Um, just like they said, we are not experts. We are resources. I have the financial aid people on my cell phone speed dial because I call them all the time with questions and then put the students on the phone to talk to them about whatever question they have. So then you're not being the third party, you're just giving them the phone and showing them that they can, you can do this too, you can use your phone, you can call, like nothing to be ashamed of because the FAFSA process is extremely overwhelming, or can be. Um, we've also done public FAFSA nights. We've partnered with our Battle Creek Community Foundation and other local agencies to have public FAFSA nights where we actually had volunteers be trained by Western um, financial aid office. She came over here, kind of gave us the basics of what we should be doing, what we should know, what we kind of what we're, where to go, some tips, and then we kind of just set up, excuse me, um, places all around town, public libraries, the Urban League. Um, we have the a sports center. Um, this just the different public places that the students would feel more comfortable going going to instead of coming to school because the population I've been working with haven't felt as comfortable to come to school to fill things out or have the parents feel as comfortable to go there. So if you bring things to them, that has worked really well. Um, if you build a relationship with your students, which most of the mentoring organizations have, so you have that, that plus where the students will feel more comfortable coming to you and the families will feel more comfortable coming to you instead of coming to someone who they don't know. Um, another thing is also try to make sure that they, if you are working with the older kids, that this, there is zero judgment. There is no judgment for anything. You are here to help them get to college. Like You are going to make sure that this is something that's going to happen so that they don't have that judgment factor from anybody, um, even in the schools or anything. So I've just found that bringing things to them has been one of the best things that could you could do, bring them to go to help them fill out their college applications, especially because I I did a lot of work with the alternative schools here in Battle Creek. So I found that I have to actually sit there and answer the questions as they came along. So, and that's where we could train college students too to like help a little bit and be that little extra help or ask around questions because they don't have to sit over their shoulders. It's just someone extra there to help in case they do have those questions. So yeah, that's a little bit of what I've been doing um, the past year. And I mean, you can always, the kids love going on um, campus tours. That's a huge thing. Um, just kind of decorating your office and college attire, um, wearing college things, having them wear college things, just questioning. So. Yeah, those are some really great examples, Nicole. You've, it sounds like you've done a lot and you've made a lot of headway in your year of service so far. Yeah, and if anybody has any questions or anything, they can contact me at any time or wants to bounce around ideas of what has worked or what might work. Um, feel free to contact me at any time. Yeah, and a lot of those things, while you're not working directly as a mentoring program and you're not a mentoring program staff, a lot of those things are really applicable to the field. So. Thanks so much for sharing all of your experiences. You're welcome. Um, so just to share a couple more examples of um, some things that have been happening around the state. 
in terms of college access in uh, mentoring programs. So in April, the Detroit Pistons and Mentor Michigan awarded 11 mini-grants as part of our first ever Detroit Pistons mini-grant process. Um, so those mini-grants were really used to host structured match activities throughout the spring and the summer that promote college access and encourage their mentees to think about post-secondary education. So all of these activities, um, applicants were able to apply for up to $500. And we funded activities, some great activities around the state, actually. We visited a couple of them. So there were college visits and campus scavenger hunts at colleges and universities all around the state. Um, there were college access panel discussions. Um, we visited one specifically around foster care youth, which was awesome. Um, also, there were some things around vision and future boards. So they were able to cut pictures out of magazines and really create these boards that they could take home with them. Um, also, there was a lot of college access and financial aid assistant nights for matches and families, as well as some um, planning for college sessions with matches. So here's an example of um, one of the events that was funded through the Detroit Pistons Mini Grant Fund. Uh, Winning Futures, which is a mentoring program in Southeast Michigan, they actually were able to host a series of, of events which included a tour of Oakland University and then a planning for college session 101 and a planning for college 201 session. So they actually did the college 101 session before they went to Oakland University and then the 201 afterwards, which is a really great model for getting some of those questions and those things out before you go so that they can be answered and then kind of a follow-up so that everyone can really decompress and think about that experience. So the goal of their college tour was really to expose students to the benefits of continuing education and to get them excited about their future education and career goals. So this trip for many of the students was their first time on a college campus. So during the event, students went on a peer-guided tour, so college students were guiding this tour, and it highlighted important campus offices, so they went by the financial aid office, admissions, the student union, campus bookstore, as well as the library. They were also able to view a lot of classrooms and in different formats. So they saw a large lecture hall, a science lab, and a technology lab. And they were also able to visit a few fun classes like a contemporary dance class as well as the athletic offerings in the OU gymnasium. So they really saw the span of what college can be. It's not just one thing, one major. There's tons of different things. So, and then also the students not only got to witness the academic environment, they also got a great snapshot of the social environment that college life can really offer. They were able to tour the dorm rooms, and they ate lunch in the campus cafeteria, and they had a chance to visit several student organizations. Um, and the day they ended it with an inspirational talk with Dr. Reginald McLeod, who was the director of pre-college programs. So and just to offer a second example um, through the same the Mini Grant Detroit Pistons Fund, Big Brothers Big Sisters of the Michigan Capital Region, they hosted the agency's first graduation celebration here in Old Town Lansing. Um, the event honored littles from the program, so that's their mentees, who were graduating high school, and they also celebrated the success of their matches. So both bigs and littles matched, they were matched from three years to 11 years were in attendance, as well as the families of the littles. So these are really those long and strong matches that we always talk about. And then the families were invited as well. So during the event, um, former Michigan State University football player T.J. Duckett, he addressed the group, congratulating and encouraging them, and really encouraged them to continue on a path of success and to give back to their communities, which is something that he's passionate about. So there are um, four of the Mentor Michigan College Coaching Corps AmeriCorps members serving within the agency. And so they were able to present college resources to assist the young people in the program in preparing for higher education. So they brought in a bunch of college applications, financial aid information, as well as promoted the Michigan College Access Portal, which offers a lot of great information and resources for young people who want to um, explore college. 
so now I want to kind of take you on a walkthrough of the toolkit. So the toolkit is on our website. You'll see it right here, College Positive Mentoring Toolkit, right in the middle of the page. So you'll see it both on our main page for now, but then it's also on our program resources page. You'll see it right here, College Positive Mentoring Toolkit. And then as well, we wanted to also post it on our For Mentors page. So it's right up there at the top so that any mentors can be directed to this page as well and see all of the great resources. So it starts out with kind of an introduction to college positive mentoring as well as the toolkit and really bring you through some of the information that led to creating this toolkit. Um, and then also I talked a little bit earlier about um, if you're interested in ordering a hard copy of the college positive mentoring toolkit, there's actually an order form now on our website and you can order one and get it delivered. Um, also, all of the resources, we plan to put everything online, too, so that's really accessible for everyone. So first, you'll see on um, kind of the outline of the toolkit that we talked about earlier, there's elementary school, middle school, high school, and then you'll see the additional resources information as well as the glossary. So all five sections are represented here. And for any one of these larger sections, so the elementary, middle school, and additional resources, you'll see we also broke it down by all of the individual sections within there. But if you're interested, say, in printing the entire elementary school one, if you click on that heading, it will bring up the college prep checklist as well as all of the other things. So you'll see the, um, I'm pulling it up on the screen now. So you'll see the college prep checklist, the conversation starters, and as you look through, you'll see these um, icons on the left-hand side that we talked about for the coding. So that's the community-based and the school or site-based. And so then it goes into the activity ideas. So the activity ideas are things that not necessarily comes with a, a worksheet, but they're activity ideas that mentors can do. And under each one of these activities, you'll see there's some information about the time that it would likely take for that to happen. So if you only have a half an hour meeting, you may not want to um, do the poster, plan to do the poster in all one meeting. You may want to stretch it out over a couple. So that will be really helpful for mentors in thinking about how they want to plan to do these activities and in what order. So for the elementary school, you'll see reading materials. So this includes a series of books as well as many of them have notes about what these discussions may, uh, or what these books, what kind of discussions they may promote. And then um, the last section in this are the ready to use activities. So for each one in the ready to use activities, you'll see an outline. And the language within the outline really speaks to mentors. So this is kind of their direction. What do they need to print and what do they need to bring to the match meeting to be able to do this activity? So you'll see there's 10 for elementary, just like in the middle school and the high school. And then when you pull down the full section for elementary school or middle school or high school, the 10 ready to use activities are immediately following. So here's a career stories one where they can draw a picture about what they want to be when they grow up, as well as some coloring pages, and then a school word search. And then there's seven more after that, as you'll see right here on the outline. So going back to the original, um, the website page now, you'll see on middle school, like I said, um, you can pull up any of the individualized activities as it's broken down and you'll be able to see just that. So here's the match activity ideas. So you could print that out and read through it before a match meeting. And then going back to here, I'll show you a couple of the activities within middle school. So here is a Michigan um, Community College matchup. So there's a map on here that shows every single one of the 28 community colleges in Michigan. 
So community college are really a great option for a lot of young people. And um, this activity, so on each activity, you'll see directions up at the top. And before I said that the directions that are on that ready-to-use activity outline page, those are directed towards mentors. These descriptions on the activities are for mentees, so they're for young people. So it's telling them really how to do the activity. And then for many of them as well, especially for activities like this, um, we've also provided an answer key. So going back now to the original page. So here's high school. So in high school, it's a little bit different. Instead of books, we have helpful websites and resources. You'll see here there's some information for standardized tests and future planning websites and choosing a college. So a lot of those resources are web-based versus in books, which you see with the elementary and the um, middle school. And I will also show you an activity in here. We'll show you the value of education. So some of these activities you'll see too are both applicable for high school or middle school. So you can really decide um, depending, mentors can decide depending on the um, age level of their mentee. If they're a fifth grader, they may like a lot of more of the middle school activities than the elementary school ones. So it's really all just up to the judgment of the mentors to really explore these and see what they would like to do with their mentee. So the value of education um, this one has some information about the type of income levels that come with when you have a, um, a high school dropout, a high school diploma, an associate's degree, etc. And then the activity portion of this is actually on the second page. So mentors and mentees can work together on this to really think about um, what are their needs, how much would it cost for a place to live, gas, electricity, water bills, transportation, etc. And the idea of this is that you're adding up all of the things that you need and that you want to spend money on. And then based on if you're a high school dropout or if you have a bachelor's degree, what do you really need to afford it? And thinking about if you have money left over or if it didn't cover your monthly expenses. So the idea of this is really to help their mentee think about um, the cost of living and how that relates to their education. So, and then um, the fourth section here is the additional resources outline. So you'll see there's a, um, a few different things in here that are important. Um, talking, talking about your college is an activity for mentors to actually go through to help them think about the college that they went to or a college that they're familiar with that their mentee might ask some questions about. Where can you learn job-related skills? This is just, um, it's a fun chart that really talks about the different ways that you can earn job-related skills, and this is important for them to think about, you know, social experiences and volunteer experiences are also important on top of high school, universities, technical schools, et cetera. So this really reinforces that idea that we talk about, that college is more than just the four-year university. It's really more about everything, technical schools, vocational schools, two-year community colleges. Um, and then also another really important resource on here is the Frequently Asked Questions document. So this may be something that the mentor might want to pull out um, to answer some of those harder questions when they say, why should I go to college or what is it like, um, things like that. So this is something important. And program staff may be able to answer some of these questions too and read through this document. So that is the overview of the toolkit and all of the resources that are really offered. And ideally, we're going to be adding resources. As programs really start to use this toolkit, it's going to be important that um, it can really be adaptable. And that we really want to make it web-based so that we can change and update those pieces as needed. And so um, if you do, if you start to implement this toolkit and you think of a great idea or if you find something out from the field, Always feel free to um, get in contact with us and share your story. Those are the things that we love, and we want to be able to highlight them for the rest of the field. If you're doing something great, I'm sure that someone else within the state or within the country, if you're from outside of Michigan, wants to hear about that. Um, as we stated earlier, um, the toolkit will be in um, print um, very shortly. And so, um, Obviously, it's on the website that we just went through, but if you would like a printed version, um, they will be available for $12, and there is um, a form on the website 
um, that you can order from. So um, if you have any problems, just contact us and we will um, be sure to get you some copies. So I just want to take a minute and leave some time at the end here for are there any questions or comments that you might have from the presentation. Um, so if you want to type those into the question log box or if you raise your hand, we can unmute you and you can ask your question over the phone. So we'll just hang out for a minute and see if there's any questions. So I also want to let you know that we're going to be posting um, the slides for the webinar on our SlideShare account. So the website for that is slideshare.net slash mentor Michigan. And so if you're interested in bringing down any of these slides and looking at maybe um, some of the information or passing that along, feel free to do that. I don't see any more questions coming in at this time, so we're going to go ahead and sign off. But I really want to thank everyone for being on today's webinar, and we hope that you learned a lot and you're ready to explore the toolkit and really get in-depth with it and share with your mentors. Thank you. Thank you.